Welcome to Getting Into Vault, part 10. We've made it to 10. Uh, oh yeah, I know. How's it been going, Melissa? How's your vault journey? <laughs> I think it's been going pretty good. I, I'm definitely not ready to sit the certification, but I feel like I've learned a ton and it's going to make all the rest of the study much more easy. Yeah. So we've we've covered installing vault, we've covered initial configuration and HA and um, snapshotting and um, PKI and transit secrets and audit logs. And um, I feel like I could I could maybe figure this stuff out. So nice. I'm, nice. I'm excited for today. That's exciting. Yes, uh, because today we're going to show the easy way to do things. Um, oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> where you don't have to actually install Vault, but we were we were we were doing Vault the hard way. So I mean, you know, it works out. Um, so we were starting from scratch. But um, if any of you missed the series, there is a link, a playlist um, that has all of the episodes in it, so you can review those to your uh, to your um, to whatever time or whatever pace you would like. Uh, but hello, welcome to Getting Into Vault. We learn Vault the ch slightly challenging way. Um, we'd love for you to interact in chat. We want to hear your comments. We want we will solicit for feedback on chaotic things that we should be doing, um, whether it be destroying security groups or backing up in the wrong place and not restoring it properly. Um, we're here, Melissa and I are here to show the not so pleasant configuration sometimes and sometimes the failure paths we take and how we debug and troubleshoot. Um, so it's not like we prepare this 100%. Um, we prepare some of it, but not all of it. Um, and the idea is that we want you to participate with us. So as you do participate in chat, be welcoming, respectful, and professional. We have some community guidelines. Check that out. Um, if you are on LinkedIn, um, we may not see your comments immediately. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a async or async issue between when the comments get posted on LinkedIn and when we see them, but we will answer your LinkedIn comments after the stream. So sometimes we'll see them show up, sometimes we won't. So we'll be sure to um, we'll be sure to answer them if we have any questions. With that, Melissa, today we are going to do vault the not hard way. Um, okay. Yes, but we're going to show some uh, enterprise features of vault. Uh, these are features that you don't have in the community edition, um, partially because you might not really need them. This is for a scale, more of a scaling concern. Um, and we're really going to highlight one of those features today, and that is performance replication. So Melissa, you had one cluster, vault cluster, and that one vault cluster was in the US East Coast, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the East Coast just had an earthquake. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and you can imagine, you know, if the East Coast, you know, just, you know, that availability zone or that uh, region sort of goes down, you know, because of that earthquake, then suddenly you can't access Vault anymore. Right. That would be very sad. Yes. So what would you suggest as a solution? Um, putting a backup or or cluster pair somewhere else that's not on the East Coast. Precisely. So if you decide that you want to do multi-region vault because you need that from an availability standpoint, um, there is something called replication. There's two types of replication. Um, there's performance replication, and then there is, oh, my brain just, my brain just pooped uh, on replication. Um, <laughs> hold on. All right. Am I even allowed to say that? Disaster recovery replication. Oh you're, you're fine either way. I, I'm, I know. I just was like, oh, great. I don't know why today, but um, so there we are. So that is uh, replication. There's some docs on replication, um, but there's two types of replication, disaster recovery replication, which is there's a backup in another region. Um, and then there is performance replication in which you may decide that you want to run your vault architecture, multi-cluster architecture, active, active, uh, because you might have, let's say, an application in the West Coast that needs to access, um, you know, that you want to stay in the West Coast. You don't want it to go to the East Coast to get secrets, right? So and you might want that for performance reasons. You might just decide, like, from an availability standpoint, you really want high availability, multi-region, um, active, active setup, in which case performance replication is something that you would look at. So that's one of the things we're going to look at today. Um, we are not going to use the enterprise licensing because um, it would it's going to be challenging for all of you folks if you decide to go back and you want to redo this yourself. It's going to be really challenging for you to start playing around with. So we're going to use HCP Vault, which is a managed cloud platform for 
vault, um, which will make it a little bit easier for us. Um, so Melissa, uh, I am going to have you share your screen uh, yes. because today we're going to do some CLI stuff or some UI stuff um, in order to set up um, HCP vault with performance replication. Awesome. Yes which is unusual. Most of the time, you'll see me setting things up with Terraform. You'll see me set things up by CLI, but you're very rarely going to ask. Uh, you're going to see me setting things up by UI, but today we're going to do it by UI just to show it a little bit easier. All right. So this is HCP. Um, Melissa, do you have questions before we dive into HCP and other things? Why would one use HCP versus enterprise? Yeah, so enterprise means you have to host it yourself. Um, and that means that you have to build up the infrastructure, load the binary, load the license file, um, and run the vault servers yourself, similar to how we've been doing it in our live streams since the very beginning. Uh, and there's a benefit to running things yourself. If you're particularly security conscious, you have a security posture in which you want to secure all of your hosts um, from uh, you know, perhaps a cost standpoint, you might decide you want to be really efficient with your infrastructure. Um, or you know you have networking requirements. That means that you cannot use a you know some kind of SaaS product. Um, that may be worth you know it is worth saying I'll do something like Vault Enterprise uh, versus HCP Vault, where if you just want to get started and you want to create a Vault cluster, um, you have the interface to do it. You uh, HCP Vault um, handles the control plane or the the Vault servers, um, and you can connect Vault clients to it. Uh, what I would say is that this isn't that you can't, it's not like you can't lock down this cluster. So if you're on AWS, um, Melissa, if you go to the HBN, HashiCorp virtual network section, um, you can set up a peering connection or a transit gateway in AWS. That means that you're only communicating over the private network. Um, so you don't have to transmit secrets over public network if you don't want to, at least in AWS and Azure. You can decide that you're going to just um, do that by network peering your VPC to the HashiCorp um, virtual network VPC, and that's where Vault is going to be um, deployed into. So um, if you click into getting into Vault Live, I've already set up a HashiCorp virtual network. Um, and I've already peered it to um, a destination VPC already. So this is the VPC that I'm going to have all my clients in. Um, so if let's say I have an application running, this application is deployed to this VPC. Again, you don't have to do peering. You could also do transit gateway um, if you have many of these that you need to peer, that you need uh, connectivity from a private networking standpoint. Um, but at least for now, we're just showing peering just because it's a little bit easier this way. Does that answer the question? I think so. I think so. So, so in general, if I've got people to manage Vault and want to have a lot more granular control over my environment and maybe some on-prem requirements, I can I can run Vault Enterprise. Yep. If if I don't want to spend my time and energy managing Vault like from an install and, and software maintenance perspective, HCP is easier. Yeah, that's correct. So we're going to show HCP because really we're just going to show performance replication and some of the nuances with it. We're going to talk about it. Um, I'm not going to go dive deep, deep into it. That's, I think, beyond the associate exam but for certification. But um, it is important to know in case you do have this kind of requirement. So uh, I did want to show it. And people did ask for it. So we shall, we shall give what chat asks or sometimes. Um, okay, back to, okay, so if we go back, you're laughing. <laughs> if we go back to networks. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to deploy a vault cluster. Um, so if you click vault, there's a lot of pieces to this, but yeah. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna start from scratch because, uh, you know, there's like, you know, there's some things that, you know, we wanna say there's encryption key value and PKI, but really we're just gonna start from scratch. Um, so we'll just create the cluster and we're going to do it on AWS. Um, okay. the, yeah. So the tier that we're going to go, if you click that drop down on vault tier, um, we want to do plus. Um, plus means that you get performance replication. Um, and we'll say small. I don't think we need a large cluster. A small cluster is perfectly sufficient. We're not going to be doing too much in terms in the way of secrets right now. So, so replication isn't necessarily... CPU or RAM intensive if your environment is small. Yeah, precisely. Um, so all of this is going to be handled for you, so you don't have to worry about that. 
Um, if you don't have that many secrets and you don't have that, you, I mean, I mean, I guess if you really have like, a, if you have like, you're using a lot of plugins, maybe you want to up the memory, but size is not necessarily tied directly to replication. Um, okay, so we do want this network uh, getting into Vault Live. That's fine. Um, cluster ID, uh, I would say, I would label this primary, um, just so you know <laughs> what it is. Um, because the way that performance replication works is that there's a primary and secondaries. Um, so the primary has all of the right operation, most of the right operations and read operations, although secondary do have right operations if they're local secrets, mission secrets engines. Um, but primary is the one that is going to say, I, this, this is the information that is correct. So yes. <laughs> I mean, I guess we can name it after me. I mean, I'm okay with that. I mean, you, could say, um, you know, you don't even need vault cluster. You could just call it primary. I mean, it's a, you know, whatever. It's a cluster ID, so you don't even have to name it for what it is. Um, you could just call it primary. Uh, so we'll just kind of, we're going to call it primary and uh, we'll start from scratch. So we're not going to, eh, you know what, we'll do K KV. Let's, let, no, actually start from scratch. Let's start from scratch. Because then, Ooh. yeah, there's okay. like all these other options, but um we are going to start from scratch because i want to make sure we show replication and what the implications are of it okay so we're going to create cluster Woohoo! uh-oh mm -hmm. it will take some time <laughs> it, it's it's thinking it lot. is it five is. to ten minutes to talk five to ten so. minutes to talk so so this is creating the primary i assume we're going to have to create some kind of secondary somewhere else yes um so the secondaries are going to be through HTTP. So I don't know if we can create the secondaries until we can until we get the primary up and running. In retrospect, right. I probably should have just done it first, but that's okay. That's all right. It's um, good for the workflow, right? Yeah, you know, it, it's good. Uh, so we do need to make sure that we have a yeah. So we do need to make sure we have a primary before we set up um, set up the secondaries. So it should be evolved. Oh, so many advanced topics. Yeah, I know. There are many topics here. Um, and we can add like secrets and stuff to it. Uh, you know, it's like this is something we're going to be doing differently. Uh, oh, we do have a chat question, which Yay! is videos and tutorials from scratch, Terraform architecture for AWS and Azure. Uh, I think we have one for AWS, right? I want to say we do. Pretty sure we do. Yeah. If not, we can definitely build that. Yeah, getting into, ter I think the Terraform, Terraforming with Freeman, I think at some point, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, that series definitely had it. Terraforming with Freeman was like very much start from Terraform scratch. Um, that one I would say is the the most recent one. Oh, I think I, by the way, they're in construction in the back, so my light is flickering right now. So this is going to go real well. <laughs> oh, it's fine. You know, earthquakes, construction. Yeah, yeah earthquakes. <laughs> um, but I will post, there is a, um, you know, I, we have, AWS does have tutorials. So if you are interested in something in particular and you want a um, workshop, there is a workshop there. Um, you can take a look. This is that we have our, our we have tutorials in in HashiCorp's um, in HashiCorp's documentation for AWS. But if you want something more end to end, um, this one is from AWS, so you can take a look at that one as well. Um, for Azure, we have our HashiCorp tutorials for that. We also have user groups, and sometimes we tour around and do things like Terraform certification enablement, where where we'll, we can um, help you get started on that journey too. Yeah. Exactly. Well, while we wait for this, I guess I could share my screen and we can just talk through replication. Let's do it. I guess that that is seem that seems logical. Do you okay. need me to stop sharing or can you make the magic happen in the background? I think I can make the magic happen. I think I already did. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Um, so this is a helpful diagram on how to think about uh, replication. Um, but the, the idea behind replication is that, again, you might have uh, a requirement for you to have multiple vault clusters. You might have one in US East one, one in US Central, and one in US uh, West or some, you know. Um, and you want to make sure applications in US West can always access the secrets in US West, access the secrets in US Central, access the secrets in US East. 
Um, and so you have what is called a primary. In a performance replication, you have a primary, which replicates data across to the secondaries. So you can have any number of secondaries. Um, and it will mirror the configuration. So you, it will mirror the auth methods. It will mirror secrets engines, audit devices. Um, the one thing that I will say is, that, so disaster recovery, which is basically passively replicating all of this into a secondary cluster, um, is going to mirror everything 100%. So tokens, secrets engines, everything is going to be mirrored um, to in its entirety. But performance replication, um, it replicates everything except for tokens and leases. And this is really important. Um, when you're doing something like performance replication, uh, let's say your application in US East One um, has uh, needs to access a data, you know, a, I don't know, a database credential, right? Um, that is going to be an independent token and lease than a, an application in US East One that needs to access um, the the same the same set of the same secrets engine, right? It's going to be a different lease. It's going to be a different token, um, and that's because it's partially because if one of these regions goes down and you know we can't access some other region, that lease information is gone. Right? Um, so uh, so it is localized. It will retrieve that information um, and, and and issue a at least individual to each cluster replicated cluster. So um, the result is that you do need to uh, keep that in mind. If you are issuing tokens and you're issuing leases, they are going to be specific to the, the cluster in the case of performance replication. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. Uh, with that, um, there's, we're going to look at this a little bit further. But um, there is something important to also know about replication in that you don't always want to replicate everything. Um, a good example of this is, Melissa, remember the PKI Secrets Engine? Yes. What did the PKI Secrets Engine do? Um, let's see. It helped with certificate rotation for um, for certificates. So, yeah. so we could give it a certificate and then tell it to generate a new one and all that good stuff. Exactly. And remember, we had intermediate CAs. We had a root CA. We had a root CA, and then we had intermediate CAs that issued certificates. Well, sometimes certificates are region specific, right? You don't want um, the certificate being shared across all the regions because it might not be valid. Um, and so the result is that if you say that you replicate that secrets engine and then let's say an application US East One tries to access, uh, you know, access that certificate, but the certificate's only issued to US West One, then it's a bad certificate, right? It's not valid. So you might decide that you're going, in the case of certificates or PKI Secrets Engine, you might decide to do something called local and um, where it is specific to that region's cluster, right? So US West One has a certificate that is issued to US West One, everything is fine. Um, the, secret, the PKI Secrets Engine in US East One issues certificates for US East One with DNS, correct DNS for US East One. So all of these things are important to consider. You don't want to replicate every Secrets Engine. Um, even in the case of kit key value, you might decide you don't want to replicate all of your key value, all of the secrets and key value uh, in KV. You might just decide you only want it for certain regions, you know, just to limit the potential blast radius if someone just, you know, compromises that secret. But, you know, it's ultimately your decision on whether or not you replicate everything or you have them local to a specific uh, cluster. So um, PKI, oh yeah, PKI was the example here. Um, but the other one that I will also say is a little bit tricky is Database Secrets Engine. Um, you can't, Database Secrets Engine is really challenging to do local um, and replicated introduces some, replicating a Database Secrets Engine is also very challenging as well. Um, so that's something to consider your database whatever database you have has to support um, write replicas. <laughs> uh, so we'll talk about that briefly. But um, this is something that uh, if you're doing something like performance replication, it's something to consider. Um, so you have options to do replicated, local, or just don't replicate certain things to downstreams. So that's what ignored is. Um, you can choose to replicate, not replicate certain things as well um, globally. So that's something you can configure. OK. All right, let's check our cluster. OK. Did it? Ah, yes, it is. Yes. It is available. Okay, so unfortunately, I think I think uh, we only have a private cluster URL. <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. Um, oh my! We should be able to access it anyway because I peered it. So let's hope. 
let's hope we did that. Uh, let's actually click manage. Maybe we can switch it to public, but I don't think we can. I think it has to be redeployed if we switch it to edit configuration. Let's see. Can we switch it to public? Was there, there was no public. I, I don't think there was a public option. I'm not even seeing. Oh, cluster networking. Could... Visit cluster networking. That thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Okay. So save and then save. We'll just do that. Um, no, none of this business. Just. I mean, go for if it. you if you IF config your your machine and then get your IP, uh, uh, we, could, we could do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh goodness. If we oh, get your no machine, one hates on us for that. <laughs> if we get your machine's public IP address, then yes, we could we could fix the allow list. But today we're we're just not going to do that. Yeah, let's um, not mess with that today. Yeah, my my change is like crazy. Yeah, yeah, we're just not going to do that because Melissa's computer is notoriously, you know, all over the place. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so we're good here. Um, now let's go to replication. It's on the side nav there. Yes. Yes. Replication. So we're going to set up replication. Um, we're going to do a secondary. I mean, you could do secondary one. That's fine. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's okay. Uh, you don't have any other networks. Oh, well, that's not helpful. Okay, create a network. Uh, yeah, HVN. Do I want to create another one? I mean, I guess I could create another one. Yeah, West. We'll do West. <laughs> I should have created a second okay. region, but it's we'll fine. do West. Huh? Is this okay? Yeah, that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Or actually, we should change the 16 to, what is the end of that? Hold on. One subnetting is subnetting today. Hold on. Let me double check what's this second, what's the next, because it's slash six slash 20. I want to say it's slash 17, but uh last uh, no it's 32 so 172 25 32 32.0 slash 20. okay and then we're going to create the network yep under five minutes so more time to chat i know that's a, in retrospect i i was like i forgot the <laughs> I didn't want to pre-stage these though. I don't want to pre-stage. It's good. Them. So, so this is a lot like setting up stretch clustering in data center land, like back in the day, where you had to make sure your networks were were set up. You had to do routing between them. Is th is there any magic here in terms of routing between them that's done in the background, or do we have to set that up too? So it is. HCP will do this for you. Um, so this is something that it, fortunately HCP will set up. Um, if not, then we we just add a peering connection to it. So that's really what it comes down to. Um, you potentially will have to add a peering connection in HCP. But um, if you were to do this not in HCP, you were to do Vault Enterprise, you do need to have some connection between um, your east and your west. So your, your, your primary and your secondaries, you do need a connection. So if you create the connection there, um, we're going to create a peering connection. Uh, I think we don't need this. Okay, I think we're okay. Automate peering connection. We already have a peering connection, so I think we're good there. Okay, scroll down. Yeah, I actually think we're okay. We don't need a peering connection. So cancel? Okay, cancel. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you go back to networks. Networks, yes. Back to networks. So now we have two. We have US East one and we have US West. Um, so once we set up replication, HCP will, HCP vault will automatically do the peering for us, I believe, as I okay. last time I did this. So you do vault. I do this all by Terraform folks. So with it, <laughs> I'm just like, let Terraform handle all We it. should totally do this via Terraform at some point. Oh. Maybe with Chris or somebody since yeah. Chris is lurking in the background. Yeah, yeah we could so probably much. do it. Yeah, we could do that with Terraform. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, you click primary. So let's set up replication for that. Woohoo. Yeah, I do it all by Terraform. So all of this, I just don't, I don't know the UI very well. I, I, I'm going to admit it right now. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. That's like one of the golden paths, right? Is to configure yeah. all this through Terraform so you don't make mistakes, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so you click replication. Replication. On there the is. side nav. Yep. Yeah. 
<laughs> set up replication. Let's Yay. try this again. Okay, now we have a new network. Um, you can call it secondary. I mean, I honestly, I the, the cluster ID is fine. It's just kind of like okay. Um, I, because second, if we have more secondaries, we could do secondary two, secondary, etc. So yeah. Um, okay, so scroll down. Important thing to know is that this is something that you can set up even in enterprise. It's also valid in HTTP. Um, you can decide you're going to replicate all namespaces and mount paths. If you're not familiar with Vault Enterprise, um, Vault Enterprise has this concept called namespaces. It's really important if you have a lot of applications and you're planning to do some kind of multi-tenancy architecture with your vault cluster. If you have a lot of different applications across a lot of different business units and you don't want all of them accessing each other's secrets, you can do something called namespaces. So there's a parent namespace and then further child namespaces that you can continue adding. So a good example of this might be um, you might have a prod, a top level prod namespace and it's prod for a payments app, prod for a accounting app or something. Uh, and those namespaces can be further subdivided. Uh, and you can tell different um, access control requirements to say you're not allowed access to this namespace. You are allowed access to this namespace. So um, there are a lot of there, uh, there's a lot of things that you can do there for that. Okay, so our secondary is coming up um, and it's connecting. Um, so this should automatically peer the US East and US West um, virtual networks. So hopefully that does happen. Uh, if not, we shall wait some more. OK. What about the private IP on secondary? Are we going to want to configure a public one right away after this gets set up? Or do we want to wait until, well, I guess if we're doing performance replication, we'll need a public IP, huh? No, we don't. Um, again, when you do performance replication on HCP, it is um, going to peer the private networks. So there is going to be connectivity. Uh, but or at least there will be Transit Gateway, I think. I can't remember which one it was, but I think Transit Gateway. Um, it's a multi-region Transit Gateway. But the um, the secondary, we will add the public one if just so that you can access it. Um, you should theoretically be able to access the primary, to be honest. So we can try testing that out now. If you click on primary, and then you go to generate token, and I'm going to take you off stage because this is going to be a token that's going to like get uh, that you're going to show on your UI. So I would rather we not show that. But okay. if you click, I assume new admin token, or yeah, is there? So I'm, yeah, that one. I'm going to remove no. you off stage for a second. Okay. So click on that, and then copy your token into notes. <laughs> okay. Now, if if we do this token stuff anyway, most of the time. Um, even if it gets shown on screen by accident or necessity, we're dumping and reconfiguring this every time. Yes, that's correct. So, so this will be deleted at the end of the stream. Right, right. Just so everyone's aware, we're not leaving this stuff up and open for, okay. for people to come in. Did you copy the token? Yes. OK, I shall add it back. Um, OK, so you copy the token. Uh, now what we're going to do is if you go to the copy the private URL. We're going to try this first. Copy the private URL and then paste it into notes somewhere. OK. Uh, you want to take me back off screen for that? No, private URL is fine. Oh, are you pasting it? OK. Well, I'm pasting it in the same notes that I have the other thing. <laughs> nice. Tell me when. <laughs> OK. We're ready? Good? Yeah. OK. Well, yeah. wait, no. <laughs> Sorry. I don't see anything. I think because you're sharing Chrome, you're fine. Oh, okay, okay. And it's I'm like, fine. but once okay. we get to the boundary, once we get to boundary, then I think we're doomed. Yeah, so. that's fine. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Okay. okay, we're good. All right, all right. So we're gonna just test. We're gonna pull. Uh, we're gonna try to. Um, we're gonna just make sure we can access the primary first. So if you go to boundary and then log into any one of the vault, uh, any one of the vault clients, uh, we're going okay. to do this again. Um, Melissa has access to boundary that has access to virtual machines that have access to private networks. Um, and the private network should be peered correctly. And I did add security groups. So we should hopefully see the correct thing. But uh, if we don't, that's OK. We'll just access it over the public network. All right. So there's that. And I should probably share my screen, huh? Mm -hmm. So I will do that real quick. Um, I'll stop sharing the tab and start sharing screen. Woo Entire screen. Look at that. Sorry for the infinite um, 
Okay, source opt vault opt vault. Do do we do opt vault this time? No. So okay. you are using you're you're in HCP. So the first thing we're gonna do is export the vault token um, from HCP. Uh, and you yep. know what? It'll it'll just show up. I don't think there's anything we can do. <laughs> I mean, we could we could play this game, but there it is in all its glory. There's currently nothing in it, so it doesn't really do us do any good, I guess. <laughs> okay. so export, yeah, export vault ADDR. So I'm gonna do that in all caps. Yep. And then that's the other address that I copied. Mm -hmm. This guy right here. There we go. And do not show your tokens at home, kids. OK. There's one thing that we do need to do for HCP and that um, we HCP is namespaced by default. So we need to set export vault underscore namespace to admin. Yep. Just like that? Yep. OK, so let's do vault status. Let's see if it actually returns anything. Ha! Huh. What do you know? OK, I did set up the correct security group. <laughs> it is initialized and unsealed. Yep. And um, if you do vault Enterprise. secrets list, there's not going to be anything in it, but that's OK. Yeah, do not show you tokens. Yes, yes. OK. Beautiful. Just yeah, nothing in it. stuff. Literally nothing in it. Um, OK, so we are connected to our primary. We can check if our secondary is up. I'm sorry to make you switch back, but you don't actually don't switch back. Just check if the you can go to the browser and check if the primary if the secondary. Is up. OK, we're going to the browser in a second because Chrome is lovely for that. And here we are. Um, yeah, so if you check replication, replication let's see it it's is still creating, creating connection that's all right. and thinking about what it's going to be yeah yeah which Show is fine it does have a private ip though it does it does so we uh, could copy that right we could. i don't think that we'll be able to access it through us east though because i don't know if we're we've hot we don't we didn't peer our us east vpc to the us west hvn vpc so uh, yeah so we won't be able to access it. So we'll have to wait for the public one. Um, yeah, I guess we'll, while we're waiting for this, I hate to hop around. I don't want to hop around, but I kind of want to, I think we agreed to show HBS. So yeah, I, I mean, maybe we'll just wait for this to happen and then hop to HBS. I mean, we can show HBS while this is happening in the background. I think yeah. it's entertaining, right? What does the yeah. audience think? Do you want to, oh, this they, no one, I don't think anybody knows what HVS might stand for. HVS is HTB Vault Secrets. So if you really don't want to do Vault, you don't care about Vault, you just want to store your secrets somewhere and just get your secrets somewhere, there's a uh, HashiCorp Vault, uh, HCP Vault Secrets. Um, basically, you can just store your secrets in an application, like in a, in a grouping called an application. Um, and then you can synchronize those secrets to various places. You can retrieve those secrets. Um, you know, it's a little bit easier than running Vault. And so if you don't really want to run Vault yourself, uh, you don't really care that much about, uh, you know, rotation, automatic rotation. You just need a place that is uh, that is mostly cloud agnostic to store a secret somewhere. Um, then you can use uh, the HCP Vault secrets. Um, so it's, it's how, how to vault without vaulting. Yes, it's how to vault without vaulting. Um, there is a question in chat. We're going to come back to that question in chat, I think, after the secondaries come up so we don't lose context. But um, if you go back to Vault, Melissa, we'll show briefly HVS. Um, so it's HCP Vault Secrets. Uh, no, not yet. I, this, there is secret <laughs> rotation. There is secret rotation for Twilio and MongoDB Atlas in a private beta. <laughs> there, yes, yes. So if you're interested, please sign up for HCP and sign up for the beta. Yeah. But we're not going to do that today. No, we are not going to do that today. Um, so we're going to just, I guess, you know, you'll, we'll just go through this briefly. 
Um, but you could create your first app. Um, and Melissa, you can just pop some secrets in there or you could create the sample app either way. Okay. So, oh, create first app. Yes. Start from scratch. Let's do that. App mm -hmm. name. We're going to name it Rosemary. Yeah. And so if you had multiple environments, you could do Rosemary prod, Rosemary staging, Rosemary dev, whatever it is. Um, you know, that's it. It's all the same. Uh, but you want to separate each app by environment and everything else. So anytime you think about how you segment it, um, you'll want to uh, name this a new app. Why, thank you. Okay, create the app. Um, and so now you have a bunch of apps. Uh, now you'll have an app and the app has secrets in it. So effectively, all you do is just add secrets. Um, you know, if you're using UI, you can go ahead and you can just create a secret. This guy down here that's kind of hidden for yeah. me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, we really care about feedback. So if you're using this and trying it out and you have um, things that would make it better for you, please let us know what you think. Yeah. All right, now we need a secret name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can I'll have secret. Pick on Chris for this. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Worst secret ever, but. Are we good? Yeah, that's fine. That works too. <laughs> um, okay, so you know, you just create a bunch of secrets. <laughs> um, so you'll create a bunch of secrets here, um, and there is a CLI. There is an HVS CLI that you can use to retrieve these secrets. Um, you can, if you're using um, Vault, uh, if you're using Kubernetes, you can use the Vault Secrets operator to synchronize secrets from an application to a Kubernetes secret. There are a lot of ways that you can do this. Um, yes, you just keep creating secrets, I guess. Uh, okay. And so then, um, <laughs> I think that's enough secrets, Melissa. Okay. You said to create some, so I, I mean, one, some. one or two is fine. <laughs> uh, one or two is fine. Okay. Uh, okay. So we've, we've got these secrets here. Um, and if you click on integrations, I will briefly show this, um, integrations. Because, yes. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, let me actually grab the, the, the docs for this as well. So all secrets. Yeah. So um, there is, oh, shoot. Sorry, everybody. There's also some docs built in. Yeah, there are some docs built in. Okay. Uh, Paste it too quickly. Okay. Uh, there we go. There's some docs. Uh, so you can add, uh, you can synchronize um, your secrets to a to somewhere else, right? Um, so you have plenty of these. You can say if you want Secrets Manager, you want Vercel, you want GitHub Actions. Um, so you would synchronize those those application these sets of applications in that secret. Uh, it, sorry, the secrets in that application to a target. So that's AWS Secrets Manager or GitHub Actions. Um, this is something. This feature is available in Vault itself, not HCP Vault, uh, not just HCP Vault or HCP Vault Secrets. Um, but the similar concept uh, is applied to HCP Vault Secrets. So you can synchronize to a target if you would like. Um, okay, but what we're going to do is we're going to go to Secrets, uh, and I think we're going to have to return to Boundary and possibly download the CLI for it. Okay. Yeah. I think we're going to need to download the CLI. So we're going to do, uh, I think it should be there. So if you do sudo apt install VLT. Oh, if I could type. And then VLT. Yep. So it is a different command line. Uh, it's not the same. Whoa. Okay, cancel, cancel. Right, it's outdated. So just do cancel. Uh, just, uh, hit the thing. Yeah, there you go. It's fine. Um, okay. So if you do VLT help or VLT, it should just have that. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, VLT login. It might actually direct us to a browser that doesn't exist. Dang. Well, that doesn't help anything. Uh, non oh, there is a non-interactive. Um, oh, we need your service principal. Okay, so if you go back to HCP Vault, or sorry, not HCP Vault. If you go back to HCP and you go back to apps, um, you can go back to dashboard. 
So uh, in HCP, there is a concept called, uh, there is access control. So there's IM, if you go down to IM, right down at the bottom there. Um, you're going to create a, uh, if you, oh, not users, hold on. If you go back, wait a second, not groups. Um, oh, you don't have access. Oh, yay. <sighs> you you want to um, share your screen and I'll just kind of watch. I, let me, no, I'm just going to uh, elevate your access. I think that's the best oh, thing to do because um, your access, if you don't have access to it, then let me just elevate your access because then it doesn't help anything if we go project admin. Okay. So you should have access now if you refresh and you go back to access control. Yeah, so HB does have IAM controls. Um, I know there's a question in the chat about whether or not if using secrets to multiple clients, can you limit access? I don't know if this is with respect to HVS or HTTP Vault, but in the case of HVS, currently, no, there is not fine grain access control. If you create, uh, not don't don't touch that one. That one is that one's important. <laughs> uh, service principal name, you can call it uh, Melissa. It's for you, and then you can create the service principal. So contributors okay? Yeah, contributors just fine. What does contributor create. get? So contributor right? means that you have uh, access to the project to create resources, but you can't control IAM for this service principal can't control the access control policies or the org level policies. Um, so it will allow you to create to read or to create uh, secrets in HVS, for example, or any of the other. Um, any of the other service offerings, but it won't let you alter access control, for example. Okay. So create service principal key. You're going to create the service principal key down there. And then you're going to copy these. Once again. Yes. <laughs> Everybody watch. It's fine. We're going to, um, we're going to delete Everything all this stuff. Fine. Nothing is broken. Oh, come on. There we are. Client ID has been copied. Secret. There we go. Yeah. OK. Those are copied. Mm -hmm. uh... I'm going to close that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then in order to do this, we're going to need to go back to your boundary. Uh, yes. And then we're going to do export HCP underscore client underscore ID. And for those that are following along, um, we're using boundary to make it easier for me to access stuff so that you don't see a bunch of AWS CLI. Yeah. Otherwise, we will have a lot of back and forth. Eh, OK, and then we're going to do export HCP underscore client underscore ID. Client, we just did ID, you mean? Oh, um, sorry, secret, underscore secret. OK. And then we go back to this guy and we say okay here's the secret we steal that okay there we are yep okay so then you can say uh if you do vlt secrets list ah i guess organization id so we do need the organization ID. If you go back to, um, if, uh, yeah, if you do vault config init, let's see. Vault config init. Ah! I have had coffee. It's really. Okay, there we go. All right, so select Are an application name. Yep, that is Rosemary. Okay, and now you can secrets list. And Look that will show. Yeah. Okay. 
Now, this is if you were interacting by CLI, the likelihood that you would do this is kind of like, eh, right? Because most of the time your application is the one that's going to be using the secret. So what you can do is something like vault run, yeah, vault VLT run dash dash ENV um, space ENV, sorry, space ENV, dash dash space ENV. And what this will do is basically output the secrets and then print it into an, in your environment. Whoa. Uh, so there's a lot going on there, but you'll see Bruno, Chris, Cole, and Kareem there. Um, yeah, just yeah, plain, plain text this stuff. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So what this will do is it will, if you do vault run dash dash env, it will write it to your environment. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, it will write it wow. to your environment. So that way you can say, oh, like I want to inject this into my environment and then have my application run it. So you would do vault run dash dash env and then and and whatever your process is, your application process is. So, or you could write it to a file, write the secrets to a file and have your have your application read from it. You could also do that too. Um, if you're on Kubernetes, you can synchronize using VSO, um, the Vault Secrets Operator. So if you checked out our Kubernetes stream, um, the same operator that we used, that we showed to synchronize secrets from Vault into Kubernetes, the same operator has a set of custom resource definitions for uh, HashiCorp Vault Secrets. So very, very, uh, very helpful. Um, let's see. Okay, I guess does Vault support FIDA2 alone with Auth2? I am not sure. I will. I will follow up on that. So remind me to follow up on that. Um, the good question though. I'm not sure. Uh, so this is the this is Vault secrets. Very, 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 very streamlined way to just store secrets and then get them out and put them into an application. Was there any questions, anything we should cover more about with HVS? I assume with HVS, you can still do rotation and auto updates and all that fun stuff, or is that? No, so it's, okay. rotation is only done by, rotation is only done for certain types of secrets and that's in private beta right now. Um, you can do a manual rotation. If you go into the vault, um, the HVS UI, we can add a new version of a secret. It does have secrets versioning. Okay. Yeah. So you go back to Vault Secrets. You check that. Uh, you can you can change Bruno. If you click the drop down there, edit secret value. Uh, it will even give you the HCL for it. So you know, there you go. <laughs> Save. <laughs> um, if you click the 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 the, I think it's that little icon, that eye icon there. Yeah, so we'll show you it. Uh, that is the second version, um, but it does have the second, you know, it does have version. If you click Bruno, I think actually if you click Bruno, yeah, that will show you two versions. So it will show you that it's been modified. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and the other neat thing about HVS is that if you go back to secrets, go back. Yes. And you click on audit logs, um, HVS does audit. Uh, how it's going to be accessed. I guess if you refresh, it might take a bit of time. Um, but it will audit how it is getting um, retrieved from, from uh, HVS. So for example, if you're doing it by API, you're doing it by CLI. Uh, I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> it's uh, We're having an eventful morning. We're having an eventful morning. I, I don't know. It's it's yeah. it's, it's sometime. Yeah, um, yeah so it, it will audit how it's being accessed, you'll notice there is going to be access control about, um, you know, if someone is reading from UI, CLI, oh, I don't know, maybe I didn't grant you enough access, I guess, but you have admin, so I don't know why you don't have access. Um, but let me share my screen. Maybe the, let me just share my screen. Let me see if I, can... I will share my screen so folks can see the audit logs. Share screen, vault secrets, share. Okay, so um, you'll notice Melissa has listed secrets versions. <laughs> um, you know, there's a couple of things, you know, viewed, uh, secret viewed uh, from various, you know, various things, UI and CLI, right? There was a secrets listed from CLI um, as well. So there, the interface itself is also um, logged. Um, you'll see also HVS, you'll see, or VSO, you'll see UI, CLI, API, things like that. Um, so if you do want to keep track of who's accessed the secret um, and you do want to know what's going on, um, you are concerned that someone may have compromised the secret, um, you do have the ability to view that uh, in HVS as well. 
Um, so it makes it a little bit easier if you want to audit everything. Nice. Yeah. So if you have noticed, there's no vault in this necessarily. It's mostly like store the secret and then that's that. Um, so you don't have to know all, you know, basically all of the vault the hard way that we had been talking about for the past 10, nine episodes is, is, is not, it's just not shown here. <laughs> but if you're wondering, this is, this is um, uh, HCP vault secrets. So if you don't want to deploy vault, you don't want to manage a cluster, you just want to store your secret somewhere, you want it to be versioned and you want to audit it, there you are, HBS. Okay. Um, all right. Any other questions on HBS, Melissa? None right now. I think we did have one in chat around um, different projects. Mm -hmm. So okay. if, if yeah. using secrets with multiple clients, can you limit access ah, between yes. projects? Yes. I started answering the question and then I, we didn't get through it. But um, so in the case of HTTP right now, there isn't any fine grained access control that will allow you to separate by proj by um, by secret type, by secret app, right? By app. Um, so you can separate on project level. So Melissa has contributor access to our org, but doesn't have, uh, but has project admin access to our live stream project, for example. Um, so you can separate, uh, you can separate it even further if you wanted to. Um, if you have a vault client though, that needs to access Rosemary, C a Rosemary app versus Rosemary dev app, um, you cannot currently separate that. Um, that is something that we're working on now, but uh, fine grain access control per secret, per application or per secret isn't there. Um, I think that if we did do the access control, it would be on the application, application construct level and not on per secret. It would just be per, per application level for now. Um, so just make sure you group your secret with the intention of, you know, someone being able to use those, um, all of those secrets. Yeah, that's that. Hopefully that answers the question for HVS. Uh, it's a little bit different for HCP vault. <laughs> um, so if you're doing something like vault, um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you're doing something for uh, HCP vault, HCP vault, um, you do, if you're using HCP vault, you will set it up per project level. So, um, uh, you know, someone's going to be a contributor to a project, which means they do have access to create vault clusters, console clusters, and everything else, right? Um, so Melissa, as a contributor to, uh, you know, the, the getting into the vault project has the ability to create all these different types of clusters. Um, but we currently don't have a way to lock people out of certain certain service, certain service offerings. So for example, it's not like I can, Melissa has access to in, in the UI, you know, she had access to boundary, she had access to console, HCP vault and HCP vault secrets. She has access to all of those things. Um, we don't have a way of telling, of having clients separate that. Um, so there's, there's that. All right, shall we go back to our secondary, our uh, HCP vault performance replication? So, yeah, let's look at it. Okay, so we took a detour into HashiCorp vault secrets. I know, or HCP vault secrets. I know it was a detour in the middle of it, but we were waiting for the, the secondary to come up. Secondary appears to be up. Yeah, okay, so let's go back. I'm gonna share your screen now. All right, so you'll notice that the secondary has been added. If you click replication, um, on the left, yep. Yeah, on the left. Uh, you'll notice there's a primary and then there's the secondary. Wow. Um, <laughs> it gave us a public IP now. Yes, yes. So we will need this public IP. Um, and keep in mind, again, tokens are not replicated. So I will try it. But let's see if you can access the secondary with the root token that we got from the primary, right? So let's just try this out. Okay. JS. So let's go back to boundary, your, your terminal. In this case, we're just using the terminal, but um, yeah, if you do export vault address, yeah. Oh, you want me to export it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, yeah, we have to override it, I think. It's better we, no, I don't know. Do we want to override it? I guess you could just do vault ADDR. That's fine. We'll just go back in history. Okay, there we go. Um, if you do vault secrets list, Okay, so permission denied, right? And that's because we're using a root token from the primary. Tokens are not replicated. So you will need to generate a new token for every secondary that you have. Huh? 
look at that. And it's copied. And it's so copied. then we can go into boundary. Yeah. Someday. Mm -hmm. There we go. And export ball underscore token. Yep. That's correct. Boom. Right there. Okay. Now vault secrets list. Look at now that. That is that. Look it is there. that. We don't know if it's exactly the same, but there you are. Um, that is the secondary with secrets engines. Now let's create a secrets engine. So let's do KV because you know this, we've been just doing this over and over. So vault secrets enable KV dash V2. Yep. Okay. So we'll do list. See, you can do the secret vault secrets list again, and you'll you should see V2. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then let's store something in KV V2. I, I, you know, vault K, a vault KV put. Uh, dash mount, dash mount. Dash it, mount it, KV V2, okay. Mm -hmm. It's been a couple of weeks since I've run this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then, just, uh, do I need a, actually let me, Let's see here. Oh, okay. Mount equals. Mm -hmm. And then and then whatever. And then the secret or the secret name and then the key, key and the value. Yep. Just going to keep picking on Chris. Mm -hmm. Uh, silly oh. equals, yeah, you have to silly equals something. And then the value. Yeah. Okay. So we have a uh, secret. Now we've done this on the secondary. Um, let's hope that it is uh, available on the primary. <laughs> so let's swap to the primary. Um, we'll have to use the, the uh, previous vault token and vault address that we had before. That one, and then the other vault token. Yep. Okay, and then let's do vault kv get. We'll just start, jump right into it. Vault kv get on that mount, Chris. <laughs> just like that. Yep. And you'll yeah. notice it has replicated. Yes. Um, that is because we said we will replicate everything. Uh, yes. So so effectively what happens is that whatever changes you've made into Vault on the secondaries uh, do get reflected into the primaries and vice versa. So uh, if you have all of these secrets available and you have an application in US West 1 or US West 2 that needs access to this uh, key to Chris, secret, Chris's secret, and they can go access it. Policies are also replicated as well. So if Melissa, you create a policy um, that's for Chris, then Chris's policy gets replicated as well. Um, so if you do, I think if you do vault secrets, enable, and then help, maybe enable help, dash dash help. Um, there is a local, I think a local, yeah, there you go. So there's a dash local command, if you scroll down dash local there. Yeah. So let's do that against the you uh, against US East one. So we shouldn't see it in US West two. So um, let's create a local. Uh, uh, we could do KBB two, I guess that's probably the easiest. Um, local and then I don't remember the syntax for KBB. Let me see. Let me pull this up correctly. Uh, secrets enabled dash version equals two. Okay. Dash version equals two, and then equals two. And just to be just to be specific, let's do kv dash east, something like that. Yeah. So we know it's an east. Yep. Okay. Uh oh, does not allow setting a version. Oh, sorry. Kv, and then we need the mount, the path. Hold on, what's the path? Uh, 
think it's dash path. Dash path equals. Ah. I'll eventually remember it somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It might be mount. Oh, oh. it has to be before that. Mm, let's do vault secrets enable help. Let's just double check that we have the site rights syntax. Okay, version two. Uh, okay. Scroll down, vault secrets enable, options, and then type. Okay, so we have to put the options before the type. So path okay. is correct, yeah, but we have to put all the dashes before the before KV. Okay. Easy enough. And do we want KV or do we want KVV2? No, we want, K oh, sorry, dash version. Sorry, dash version. Yeah, you're right. Dash version equals two and then KV. Yep. Okay. So we've enabled it at KV East. Um, we don't, we could just list it. I don't think we need to do anything to it, but um, KV East, right? So that means that it's available in the East. Um, if you switch to the West, I don't even remember what they are. <laughs> I remember that Q1 is the secondary. You are keeping it track, keeping track of it way, way, way better than I am. <laughs> okay, so we check out list. You'll notice there is no east, right? Because it is a east? local. Yeah, no a local. east. Yeah, east, no east. Look at that, lovely. Um, yeah, so important thing to know is that there are um, there are local mounts. Um, there is a bit of a nuance to mounts if you're doing something uh, like, sorry, sorry. There's a bit of a nuance to doing secrets engines. So you have to decide whether or not your secrets engine should be local or it should be replicated. Um, if it is replicated, all of your clusters, revolt clusters need access to the endpoint that is defined in the secrets engine configuration. So. A good example of this is a database. If you have the database secrets engine enabled and you replicate it across all your vault clusters, all your vault clusters need access to that database endpoint. Otherwise, when it tries to create the secret, it will throw an error saying it cannot, the vault will throw an error saying it can't connect to it. Um, this is a bit of an issue because most of the time if you create like a managed database in US East one, unless you, have public access or you have routing, some kind of private network routing to it, you won't necessarily be able to allow all of your vault clusters to access that database endpoint. So the solution to this is going to depend on your managed database type. If you're doing something like MySQL, you can set up write replicas. Um, you do need to set up one write, rep write replica per region. And that write replica is something that you can either define as a local, uh, a local database secrets engine um, that's specific to that region, or there are some managed service, managed database offerings that will just have a DNS and will automatically forward it to the correct one for you, right? So um, that's something that you can set up. If you have something like a managed PostgreSQL database, though, they do not allow you to set up um, elevated admin on the repli on certain rep on replicas, right? So they will allow you to write replicas, but it doesn't have enough permission for you to create new users. So the result is that you can't do that with, let's say, a managed PostgreSQL database. Um, you can do it with certain other databases, but not with others. So check the database that you have. Um, check if they support write replicas with elevated privileges for you to be able to create users um, and then make a decision if you create a local or you create a replicated. Um, make sure that whichever one you decide to do, your database endpoint is available for that vault cluster to use. So that is that is something to know. Uh, yeah, that that is, I, I'm, I ran into that issue and it didn't occur to me until like much later that I was like, wow, that is a big issue. And so that's something to know about uh, performance replication. Um, I guess we could show namespaces because I did mention them. So Melissa, if you want to do vault, I think namespace, vault namespaces. Yeah. 
So you can create namespaces. Um, and namespaces, again, are another are in enterprise. They allow you to administer to separate secrets, separate secrets for applications, for business organization, for business groups and things like that. So you don't have to worry about it. So, Melissa, you can create a new namespace um, or you can list namespaces. I would list namespaces because right now you're in the uh, admin. You're in admin namespace in HCP. Yeah. Um, you can only create child namespaces under admin. So nothing has been created. Uh, so let's do vault namespace create, and you can call it Chris. <laughs> we like Chris. We're just picking yeah. on him today. Okay. So the path is admin Chris. Remember, we're in a, a namespace called admin, so we'll create a child uh, namespace called Chris. Um, so if you do um, vault underscore namespace in all caps. Mm okay. Underscore namespace equals uh, uh admin slash Chris, Chris, and then space, vault secrets list. This means that, uh, yeah, secrets list. What this means is that you'll notice there's no KVV2, there's no KV East. Uh, anything under Chris's namespace is all for Chris. It is not for anybody else. Um, you can put policies in namespaces. You can put, so the idea is that namespaces further segment, break down the vault cluster so that if you have different organizations, you're scaling this across a very large company with a lot of development groups um, that need access to vault, you can further subdivide it. Um, you just have to be careful of how you subdivide your parent and child namespaces. Um, we do have some guidance on that, but uh, in general, you know, you do want to make sure that you are separating them into different namespaces. That allows you to have least privilege on what secrets are being accessed by which application, according to which business unit. Um, and you can even further subdivide into like namespaces that offer shared secrets, for example, secrets that are shared across applications and you expect other people to retrieve them or other applications to retrieve them. So that's that. So is this namespace automatically happen in the primary too, or is it unique to the secondary? It is something that is replicated to the primary as well. Woohoo! Yes. So everything is replicated except for tokens and leases. Um, you can opt not to replicate certain namespaces. So if you have some in primary that you know only belong to the primary, you don't want other folks to do it, uh, to use it, then you can um, use the, that replicated pass filter to basically ignore that um, namespace uh, or, or segment out certain namespaces that don't shouldn't be replicated at all. Um, but for the most part, this means that you are um, you are able to separate certain namespaces and, and who's able to access them based on uh, per cluster. Um, but by default, namespaces will be replicated. Cool. Yeah. That is that. That's it for for a, That's it for enterprise. I mean, I guess we could go into more about enterprise, but I think those are the biggest in terms of questions that I get for like, what do I do if I have these problems, right? Um, if you are scaling multi-region and you have a, an availability requirement, um, do check out performance replication. Um, and if you have a lot of organization development organizations that are um, that are trying to access Vault, um, and you're kind of tired of doing Vault policies um, to separate out all of these different paths, you have like hundreds of thousands of paths, and you know you have way too many policies defining who should have access to them. Consider you know enterprise namespaces because you have the ability to separate them out. It's a little bit easier to manage. So. Um, that is that. And, and I think you can also quota by namespace as well. You can lock namespaces. So, if, you know, some secrets are compromised because, um, you know, an, uh, you know, a CICD accidentally printed out, a CICD pipeline accidentally printed out one application's credentials or something, you can lock that namespace. Um, and that means that other, um, you know, you can lock that and then manage that uh, credential and, and, you know, remediate as you need um, without necessarily affecting other applications. So, Melissa, how does it feel? It feels pretty good. I'm excited. Yeah. I mean, this is, again, a shorter one, again. Yes. Um, but I wanted to scope it because I wasn't 100% sure if, you know, we were going to be successful. <laughs> but uh, this, I think this is your officially your last stream as a driver. 
Um, yeah, yeah. We're going to bring somebody else in for Nomad. We're going to bring Rob in for Nomad. Rob Barnes in for Nomad. And Rob Barnes is going to teach me about how to run Vault and Nomad. So that's pretty cool. That's, that's um, really exciting. Yeah, that's two weeks from now because next week I will be at Google Cloud Next. If you are there, okay. let me know. We will be there. Say hello. Yes, um, please. We'd love, we'd love to, to chat. Um, but I guess because this is your last stream episode, how does it feel? What, let's retros let's have a little retrospective. It, it feels pretty good, honestly. I, I know I'm rusty on some commands. I'm going to go through um, the tracks on developer before I actually take the cert, but I'll, um, I'll post when I do. So if you follow me on LinkedIn or X, I'll, I'll say something when I pass. Um, then I'm going to be diving into the realm of exciting HashiConf demos and um, trying to help out with a couple different demos that we plan for HashiConf in Boston in October. So if you're excited, um, please please join me and follow along in my journey and, and I'll do my best to share there. Um, the whole team will be working on some aspect of HashiConf demos as well. So, so that's gonna be very fun. Um, and we'll probably post our learnings, um, some before, but a lot probably after the event to keep some things a surprise. Uh, <laughs> so, so please, you know, engage with us, join us. Um, it, it'll be really exciting. We do have Hashi Talks Secure coming up. So if you've learned something at all from, from our Vault stream, or you have expertise in Vault or Boundary or anything to do with security using our tools, please submit to the CFP for secure and, and share your knowledge with everybody. So, so thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think there's a, a yeah, I, I dropped the link to the CFP. So please, you know, if you, if you are interested and you want to speak on something cool that you've done, it doesn't have to just be about Vault or Boundary, but you know, security related. Oh, it could be supply chain. I don't know. You know, whatever is interesting, just let us know. And um, do submit to the CFP uh, and tune in um, to the virtual event. Um, the I put in the Vault Associate Study Associate Exam Study Guide. Um, we were not that we were not as comprehensive. I would say uh, there are a lot of details that you know are specific to the exam. Um, you might want to go back and review them. But the hope is that. If you've been following along with all of these parts, you get a very hands-on approach to understanding how Vault works, how to interact with Vault. And you can take that knowledge as a foundation for some of the deeper details um, that you might need to know in your, either production Vault or in your day-to-day -day implementation. Um, there was a question. I'm sorry, I finally got to it. Um, <laughs> for a prod environment, would you create a VPC endpoint for cross-account access um, and then present on port 443 instead? You can. Um, you can do that. Uh, Vault by def Vault will um, do something by 82. We'll usually do 8201 um, for TLS, so it's not 443. Um, although you can you can change it to 443 if you want. Um, and for cross account access, um, you can create a VPC endpoint for it. Um, it sort of just depends on if we're doing if you're doing it in uh, HCP Vault, it's going to be a little bit different than if you're doing um, Vault itself. Um, if you're doing Vault self-managed and you are deploying it yourself, um, you are doing, as what we jokingly say, if you did it the hard way um, and you're running it yourself um, and you do have an enterprise and you do want replication, um, you can you can set that up. Um, it's sort of, a lot of people choose different options on how they set up replication. As long as there's connectivity between clusters, um, that's really the most important thing. Um, and you would want to present on, TL, on the TLS um, in the case of Vault, it's 8201, but um, folks have mapped it to 443. Okay. I think that was a lot. Let me scroll through. Is there any other questions? I think we got the rest of them. I thought we had that one or I would have okay. mentioned it earlier. Okay. But, okay. Um, Excellent. All right. Well, then, Melissa, thank you for being so patient. I hope you learned something. <laughs> I, I learned a lot and I appreciate it. And and the people in chat have been so, so kind and engaging. So thank you all. Mm -hmm. And for those who are uh, curious, you know, to learn more, again, check out um, the Vault Study Guide for the Associate Exam, um, and you can review all of the other episodes. Uh, we will be back in two weeks, uh, and I will be learning from Rob on how to do Vault the Nomad. 
Um, but if you are interested in other deployment um, deployment models and things like that, do let us know in chat. Um, maybe we'll add another episode. But other than that, I think the Vault Nomad one might be the last episode of this series. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I hope you learned something. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, hopefully have you on our uh, next, have you interacting with us on our next episode, uh, last and final episode. But everybody, thank you, Melissa. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> you survived. <laughs> and thank you, Chris, for being a good sport today. Yes, yes, exactly. All right, everyone, have a good one.